But before we sink our teeth into all of that, Jos Bramwith and Sonia Soda are here with some of the stories making the news today. Hi. Good morning to you both. Look at him. Hi. He's at the Edinburgh Fringe. Look how happy he looks. He's there performing. How's it all going, Jos? It's going wonderfully well, I have to tell you. I'm in a state of high excitement, too, about uh, Freddy Friday, <laughs> because I know that one of the items for sale in the Sotheby's sale that's coming up is going to be his Scrabble set. Because though he was outrageous on stage, at home I think he was quite quiet. And he loved a game of Scrabble. And I think the sale is going to include, at the end of the exhibition, his Scrabble set. And it's about the only item I think I could afford. So that's what I'm going to be bidding for. Wow. Oh, lovely. And another person who's huge on stage is you. Uh, you've got Can't Stop Talking on stage at the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, that... What's it like yeah, down there? I've never been. I've well, always wanted to go. Well, you must come to Edinburgh. It's on until the end of August. It is the largest arts festival in the world. And yes, I, I've opened this week. I have, I'm very lucky. I've got full houses. And I, and I do a show. My wife thought of the title. Giles Brandreth can't stop talking. Don't know where she got the idea from. I have from. no idea, Giles. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's proving great fun. And the highlight of my show turns out to be uh, my Irish dancing. Oh! This, oh. this Well, I, I, I went to Dublin yes. a, a few months ago, and while I was there, somebody across the road waved at me and said, Hello, Joe! And, and they mistook me for being the President of the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden! <laughs> and, and Mr Biden had just been in yeah. Dublin, and they thought he was still there. And my wife said, that will teach you shuffling along the street, you silly old man. I said, at least I know where I am. So I've decided to put into the show my impression of Joe Biden, and I'm doing proper Irish dancing. Oh. Uh, which is... Uh, uh, and if, if I fall over, they'll think it's deliberate. Very important Irish dancing. It's business upstairs, party downstairs. That's how we exactly. do it. Yeah, very kind of formal here. And, uh, oh, right, oh, can we... Can you get the legs moving? Can you do the high kicks? Yeah, all right, all right, or can I? I don't know if, if uh -oh. you can see me uh -oh. here, but anyway. Oh, no, oh, dear. Uh -oh. no, do it. I mean, I am doing, I am doing it, but I am doing it, but I don't think we can get. Mind those well, spikes. <laughs> if, if we take a break, if we take a break, I'll practice it on the desk for okay. part two. Okay, look forward to that. Hey, good yeah. morning, Sonia. How are you? Morning. We're a bit, I'm, look, I'm not going to let you. We're a little bit rattled this morning because we had a bit of dress up. And it threw us into oh, complete. Craig disarray. had a bit of dress up. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. saw it. I thought it was brilliant. It's only when I saw go out I realised my children are watching that right now. A bit rattled for the first few I'm minutes. I'm sure they'll love it too. I liked it. I liked it. It's How very are you today? Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Well, that's actually the text I got from my wife this morning. Um, Giles up in Edinburgh. Have you been up to see him yet? Are you going to? Pop I up haven't. But I would love to come if if we, maybe we'll host all three of us. All three. Oh, well, um, I'll tell you what else is raffled. Rishi Sunak's household. Yes. Uh, let's go to talking point one first of all. Protesters uh, released on bail after climbing the Prime Minister's roof. But luckily, he's in LA, isn't he? He's, he's, he's not he there. He is. He's in LA with his kids. They're on a family holiday. I think they're in Disneyland or something. But essentially, these protesters from Greenpeace, I think they were, they, they scaled up to the roof of his mansion in his constituency and unfurled a whole wad of black oily cloth as part of an environmental protest. Now, I suppose on the upside of this sort of protest, um, it's not like, you know, they're blocking roads like some protesters have been doing. They're not stopping, you know, people getting, trying to get their mum to hospital or ambulances with people in the back. But I feel very queasy about this type of protest because I think it's an incursion on politicians' private lives yeah. to do this. It's very different if you're doing this in Parliament Square or, you know, in public. This is his house. Where he's he lives with there. his children. Exactly. He's not there. But it's still not OK, in my view. There's, there's a lot that puts people going off into public life. I disagree with Rishi Sunak politically on lots of issues, including the environment. But for me, I do think this kind of crosses a boundary. And I think it also maybe plays into the Conservatives' hands because we've been seeing Sunak and other ministers trying to sort of say they're on the side of the motorists in, in you know, the whole debate about how green we should go, how quickly. And I sort of feel it kind of maybe hands them an own goal as well. The only thing is, protesters will tell you, you know, uh, here it's been raining for months, we've had no summer, Southern Europe is seemingly on fire. Mm -hmm. um, they have to make their point somehow, yeah. and 
It was a peaceful protest. Yeah. Although scary for R Rishi Sunak's family yeah. to know that they could, could get there. But we're talking about it. And this is the argument from the protesters' perspective. Yeah. We have to talk about it and this is how we do it. The, the thing is, if somebody, you know, he's, he's our English Prime Minister, OK? Somebody's got onto his roof. I'd mm. be really questioning his security right now, wouldn't you, Charles? Let me tell you, from the perspective of someone in Scotland, he is the British Prime Minister. Oh, sorry. He is the Prime Minister of the whole of the United <laughs> Kingdom. But I was in Richmond in North Yorkshire last week, and I met people who, who know him and his family, and like the fact that the British Prime Minister is based in a, in a real county, they think God's only county, mm -hmm. and, and he lives there with his family. This isn't a public protest, this is a private protest. To invade somebody's garden, to climb onto their house, Yes, it gets you publicity, but actually public protests should be held in a public place. And if you've got a point to make, you can actually field people at the forthcoming general election and you can have candidates and there will be, for example, green candidates that you can support and actually make your voice heard that way. But invading somebody's home like this is simply not but, on. But, but protesters, again, Giles will argue, it was another march down through Westminster. We wouldn't talk about it. We are talking about it. Therefore, we're bringing attention to the climate crisis. I, yes, and then you have to ratchet it up because we're talking about it this time. Would we talk about it next time? Where does it end? We actually do need to let all our parliamentarians have a private life in their own homes. And, and from my point of view, this simply isn't on. Why doesn't he have security there 24-7, by the way? It's, I mean, it's a good question, but I mean, it would have to be paid for by the state. And clearly, um, the police have looked at it and decided that, you know, when the Prime Minister's out of the country, the, the security gets attached, I suspect, to her, the Prime Minister and his family rather than his property. And, you know, I, I, personally, I think it's right that these protesters were arrested. They did trespass. Um, they did potentially cause damage to private property. Um, you know, they've been released on bail. Obviously, they've been charged. There's not been a trial yet, but I do think it's right that they were arrested. But they, you know, it clearly wasn't a security risk in the same way it would have been if Rishi Sunak or his family had been in sure. the house at the time. So I, I assume that was a calculation around security. Sure, sure. Um, Wilco, I mean, the, uh, you're really saddened by this news today, weren't you? I love Wilco. So yeah. good for stationery. It's great, and just all those like little random bits as well. And it's got great pick and mix too. And I do think that when it comes to pick and mix, it's really filled that hole that Woolworths. Because when I was a kid, we always the, the Woolworths pick and mix was just the most amazing thing. Absolutely loved it, and you get that in Wilco these days. So it, well, it has become much more of a high street staple in recent years. We should say that it is uh, Wilco to file for administration. The retailer Wilco has announced plans to appoint administrators, putting 12,000 jobs at risk. Do you think it can be saved? I hope somebody comes along and buys it. And, I you think know, there's a lot of jobs, isn't it, on the line? 12,000 jobs, and those are the people who will be feeling really most anxious about this news. There's always a chance when one of these notices of in, you know, intention go out that a buyer will come in and step in, and I really, really hope that happens in this case. But we've been seeing so many kind of high street stores, um, you know, Stores like Debenhams, for example, mm. um, Woolworths itself, um, uh, stores like you know, com like convenience stores like McColls. The high street really does seem to be going down the way of decline when it comes to shops, and I just think it's really sad because we're losing things that are essentially great British institutions. I didn't realise 1930s Wilco has been around since Giles. Yes. You know, it's a real high street staple, isn't it? Absolutely, and founded by the Wilkinson family, hence the name. And there's been a little bit of muttering among some of the people who are the employees there that I think the, uh, the, there was a dividend uh, of about £3 million taken out by the Wilkinson family and others only a couple of years ago. So clearly it has been thriving until recently, but 400 stores going to the wall would be terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but I never thought that Woolworths would come to an end. Things do change. The high street is having to change. Oh, when well, I was a kid coming over to England, going to Woolworths, we didn't have it in Ireland, was such a thrill. Oh, I they that just had before. stuff you couldn't get at home, mm. you know. Mm. I know, it's sad to I see I bought these. my first, uh, my first uh, tape from Woolworths, too. Wow. Who was it? Do you remember? It was Tape That. Was it? Of course it was. <laughs> it was course Babe. It, was. it wasn't even one of their good songs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next up, uh, Meghan and Harry, royal snub. So Prince Harry and uh, Meghan Markle have been reportedly um, snubbed from events uh, commemorating the late Queen's death. Giles, can you update us on this? Excuse me, I'm just putting on my party hat.
because today is Megan's 42nd birthday. Oh, oh and happy birthday, birthday uh, Megan. Happy birthday. I, I, I've decided I'm, I'm tired with all the negative talk about Megan and Harry. Uh -oh. So I'm celebrating. Up here in Scotland, we're having a party. I thought uh, you were going yeah, Madonna there for a second, Giles. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't encourage me. Don't encourage me. I know you're, we're celebrating RuPaul's drag race later. I must not get carried away. Put those down, Giles. But the truth is, uh, yes, there are lots of stories still about Meghan and Harry, and we've got into this sort of habit of wanting to be negative about them. They have decided to make their life in California, and they're getting on with that stuff there. Uh, there's a story in the Sun newspaper today that though they are going to be in Europe, in Germany, on the 9th of September, which is the day after the anniversary of the Queen's death, they have not been invited, so we're told, to Balmoral, where the rest of the royal family, or many of them, will be gathering. Obviously, King Charles and Queen Camilla will be there, mourning the anniversary of the death of Elizabeth II. Uh, Prince Andrew, the Duke of York will be there with uh, his wife, or former wife, Sarah Ferguson, recovering from her breast cancer operation. They will be there. But Meghan and Harry haven't been asked. But then Meghan and Harry have a new life in a new country with their young family. Fair enough. Yeah, good. And I like it. No more negativity. Yeah. Let's yeah. be positive. Yeah, just leave Something we can all sign up yeah. to, I think. Spread yeah. a bit of light. Leave everyone to it. Yeah. For sake. Right, still to come. Um, and I'm sure you've been wondering about this. What do Josie and Sonia and Giles and I look as Barbie and Ken? I know it kept you awake at night, hasn't it? Well, stay tuned. We're going to discuss that and an awful lot more right after this.